Hey boys and girls, welcome back to another Grace Kids Sunday video. I hope everybody's doing good out there. Who is your favorite superhero? Maybe some of you like Spider-Man? Or how about Captain America with the shield, right? Um, who likes Batman? I'm Batman. Or maybe some of you like Wonder Woman. We all like it when heroes save the day. We like it when they beat the bad guy, right? And, and we don't like the bad guys, right? Something that might seem strange about the part of the Apostles' Creed that we're going to look at today is that it has the name of a villain in it, of a bad guy. His name is Pontius Pilot. Why would a villain be in the Apostles' Creed? The Creed says Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate. So who is Pilate? All four of the Gospels in the Bible in Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 23, and John 18, they all tell us about Pontius Pilate. See, Rome took over the land of the Jews, so Pilate was in charge of where the Jews lived. He was the person who judged Jesus when Jesus was brought to court by the Jewish religious rulers. He sentenced Jesus to death, even though he knew that Jesus was innocent. He gave in to the Jews. The Jews wanted Jesus killed because they didn't believe that he was the Son of God or that he was the Christ or the Messiah or Lord. They didn't want Jesus to be their Messiah. They wanted to be their own kings. So Pilate made Jesus suffer. He was beaten with whips and he was crucified, which means that he was nailed to a wooden cross and left to die. Boys and girls, this is a very sad and painful way to die. Pilate was a bad guy. So why is he in the Apostles' Creed? Pilate was in the Apostles' Creed first because it reminds us that the gospel is not just a nice idea, but it's a fact. It's history. It actually happened, boys and girls. The heart of what it means to be a Christian, boys and girls, is not just truths about God or about us. The heart of Christianity is a person, and that person is Jesus. Yay! Who suffered under Pontius Pilate in a particular time and place in history. Second, the creed reminds us that Jesus not only lived and died, but that he also suffered. Jesus suffered to fulfill what God said would happen many, many years before in the Old Testament through prophets. The prophets promised that God would send a suffering servant in Isaiah 53. That's Jesus. The Old Testament points to how Jesus would also be judged by a foreign ruler, like in Genesis 49. That's Pilate. Jesus himself explained many times that he would suffer just as the prophets of the Old Testament said he would. And Jesus suffered physically. That means in his body, right? And this shows us, boys and girls, that he was fully human. He suffered all his life. He felt hungry. He felt thirsty. He grew tired. He was sad. But he especially suffered under Pontius Pilate. Jesus chose to endure suffering because he loved his father and wanted to obey his father and because he loved us. But 
Jesus suffered spiritually. See, there's a bigger meaning behind Jesus' sufferings, and it's related to our relationship with God, our spiritual relationship. When Pilate passed judgment on Jesus, it was God also passing judgment on his son, but for a different reason. Jesus was standing under the judgment of God for us. God declared Jesus, his son, guilty for our sins. At the cross, God poured out his full anger, or the Bible calls it wrath, his full punishment for sin upon Jesus once and for all. In Romans 8.32, it says, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. The wrath of God against our sin was taken fully in Jesus' suffering. But make no mistake, God also declared Jesus to be innocent and not guilty. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake, God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. His suffering was on our behalf. He was sinless. He was suffering for our sin. Boys and girls, we should believe in God's promises because he promised to send a servant who will suffer to save his people from their sin by suffering for them. And he sent Jesus, who suffered under Pontius Pilate. And Christians are called to share in Jesus' suffering. Here's what I mean, boys and girls. Being a follower of Jesus or a disciple of Jesus is not always easy. Jesus said, if you want to follow him, you need to take up your cross and follow him. That means following Jesus may mean that we suffer too. You see, doing right may mean we can't get what we want sometimes. Doing good may mean that we're doing something that others don't like. See, sometimes following Jesus is hard. But, boys and girls, following Jesus, suffering for Jesus, is always worth it. Just like how Jesus' suffering and death led to his resurrection. So our suffering as we follow Jesus leads us to our own resurrection and eternal life. I believe in God the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of a Virgin Mary, and he suffered under Pontius Pilate. We thank Jesus for suffering for all those who believe so that we who believe will never have to suffer God's eternal punishment for sin. But instead, we have the promise of eternal life as we follow Him. Okay, boys and girls, this week's Bible lesson comes from the book of Matthew. That's Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 to 46. That's Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 46. So go ahead and get out your Bibles, hit the pause button, and read the Bible together as a family. Okay? Welcome back, boys and girls. So today's Bible lesson is about the parable of the wicked tenants, right? And just like the creed said, God's own people rejected the Son of God, right? Rejected Jesus. Why did they do that? Let's find out why in today's Bible lesson video. Enjoy. Jesus was teaching in the temple. He told the religious leaders to listen to this story. A landowner planted a vineyard. 
he built a wall around the vineyard and dug a pit for crushing grapes. He also built a tower. The landowner rented the vineyard to some tenants and left the country. When it was time for the harvest, the owner sent some servants to go get his grapes. But the tenants grabbed the servants. They beat up one servant, killed another, and threw stones at the third. So the owner sent more servants to his vineyard, but the tenants attacked them too. Finally, the owner sent his son. He expected the tenants to respect him, but the tenants threw the son out of the vineyard and killed him. Jesus asked, when the owner comes back to the vineyard, what do you think he should do to those tenants? The religious leaders answered, they deserve to die. The owner should rent the vineyard to people who respect him. Jesus replied, don't you know what the scriptures say? The stone that the builders tossed aside is now the cornerstone, the most important stone of all. God did this and it is amazing to us. Then Jesus said, so I tell you, God's kingdom will be taken away from you and given to people who do what he commands. Anyone who trips over this stone will be broken to pieces, and this stone will crush anyone it falls on. When the religious leaders heard Jesus' story, they knew that Jesus was talking about them. Jesus told this story to teach the religious leaders about himself. God sent his own son Jesus to earth, but the religious leaders rejected him. Jesus is the cornerstone, the most important one of all. Only he can save us from our sin. So boys and girls, we need to understand that following Jesus as our Lord means that we don't follow our own way and our own selves and our sin. We need to listen to Jesus. Well, that's it, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed uh, this week's Grace Kids Sunday video. Remember to discuss the Bible lesson and to discuss the Apostles' Creed lesson as a family. What stood out to you? Uh, maybe what questions you might have? And what does God want us to do? Right? Light bulb, question mark, arrow point. What stood out to you? What questions you might have? And then arrow point. What does God want us to do in light of the truth that we learned? Okay, and don't forget to tune into your Zoom classes as well. Well, have a great week, boys and girls. God bless you.